I've lived my entire life online since I was 16 years old. You know, my life is James Charles. Hi, sisters. I just want to be able to tell my story of the things that I've gone through. A lot of the guys that I used to spend my time talking to were guys that would treat me like a science experiment or like a secret. You can only choose one makeup product. Oh, such a boring question. Girl, if I'm bring, going to a fucking deserted island, I'm bringing a flare. I'm bringing up a raft. I'm bringing up an oar. It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an F. Hey, and the F is for phenomenal. <laughs> Okay, is ass, legs, cellulite good? And then we can go. Who cares cellulite? Me. Girl. Big time. No. Big, big, big. Okay, here we go. James Charles, I am so excited to be sitting next to you. The fact that you are letting us record in your home. Welcome. Thank I'm you like, for coming. Th thank you. <laughs> I was imagining your home and I was thinking about your fridge. Oh, what did you... Tell me. Well, I didn't really, I mean, it is exactly what I thought it would be. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a wine cellar with just Coke. <laughs> like like glass Coke. What, well, every whatever. house in LA is so cookie cutter and they all come with these wine cellars. And I understand if you're like a wine drinker, that would be a gorgeous feature to have. We're but not. I think it's disgusting. It's I so nasty. And it's time that we start having that conversation. I think so. that is <laughs> so instead. intelligent. <laughs> How embarrassing though, going to Italy. That's where it really becomes an issue. Really? Why? Because you're in Italy. Everyone is getting wine. They're known for their wine. Oh. And then I'm over here like, um, margarita. Just kidding. I would never. No, I'm a Coke girl through and through. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say re-say that because that sounded kind of crazy. Okay. I just, um, nothing hits like a cold cup of Coke, especially the Mexican Cokes in the glass bottle. Ooh. Tr the glass bottle makes it every time. Yes. Your glam room and where you do the makeup <laughs> is really what I'm so excited to see. Can't wait to show you. I'm going to cry, 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 <laughs> cry. So there's a lot to discuss today. Of course. My podcast is lighthearted, fun. It's in the comedy section. I think there's some responsibility and I need to be responsible as do you. Yeah, of course. So I think we should just jump into the hard shit. Okay. And <laughs> right then, the then we move along. Sure. That's Does, fine with me. It is? Yeah, of course. Okay. So where are you now with the situation? I'm great. I'm really good. Everything that the drama that happened was about three and a half, almost four years ago now. It'll be four years in April. Mm -hmm. And I'm at a really good mental place. It took me a long time to heal and get over and get through everything, but it's something that I will never forget about mm -hmm. and have had to live with, but it's been such a, a a blessing in disguise truly to teach me so many valuable life lessons about love, about business, about just my own personal safety and protection. And it was, you know, a thing to go through, but I'm really proud of, you know, the mental progress that I've made. And um, I, I do like to believe that everything happens for a reason because I think that you could drive yourself crazy by believing otherwise. Yeah. So I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. That's good. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that actually. <laughs> yeah, of course. I do want to bring up a quote from Cosmo. Yeah, go ahead. And it said, when I pulled friends and colleagues about Charles, so this is from the writer. Yes. In the run-up to this day, the general consensus was that he had done something bad, but no one was clear on exactly what. Yeah. I think that's a very, very profound and important quote from the article. But what do you think they meant by that? I think that... I grew up in a time on YouTube where we are used to sharing every single aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ever since day one, I have made a lot of mistakes growing up. I've had a lot of great moments, a lot of bad moments, a lot of embarrassing moments, and that's all documented online. And, you know, as YouTubers, we we didn't have publicists, we didn't have PR teams. When we did something bad, we were taught that the appropriate response is to get on camera and have an open and honest conversation <laughs> with the people that gave us the platforms in the first place. Right. And although I'll, my, some of my apology things in the past have become memes or videos that people have laughed at, which I can understand why, 
I will say anytime that I've ever fucked up, I've gotten online and I've always been honest. I don't send cease and desist letters or stay silent or threaten legal action, which is what nowadays, you know, all PR teams have people do. And I think that when I realized that I fucked up, like I had mentioned, I wanted to get online and have a conversation Mm -hmm. and apologize for what I did do, which is that when I was 21, I had conversations with two guys that told me they were 18. And after about an hour long combo, I realized that they were lying and I blocked them and that was it. Mm -hmm. One of the guys in the Cosmopolitan article that you mentioned literally admitted now years later that he did lie and that he wished he never did in the first place. But I think that when that got posted, somebody will post a video but that'll quickly get turned into a viral tweet, a a TikTok little snippet, one little clip from here or there or an Instagram story. And, um, you know, on social media, we all know that the most interesting or the most exaggerated or the craziest content is what's going to go viral. So I apologize for something that I did do and that I recognized was wrong, which mm-hmm. was not checking IDs and not ta- not taking proper precautions with the people that I was having conversations with. And I will forever admit that and be embarrassed by that and own that. But it just got so twisted into all sorts of crazy words and accusations and stories that literally just did not happen. Mm-hmm. And I think that because I posted an apology, it turned into, oh, James Charles apologized for what was said in this tweet or James Charles apologized for what was said in this video. But that's not what it was. Well, it's crazy. The whole apology video thing, and I've done a few of them, <laughs> they bite you in the ass, which it, it, that's so backwards, right? Yeah. Like it should be a good thing, but people, it, the video will never be good enough. They weren't sad enough. They weren't remorseful enough. They didn't say that, you know what I mean? I think it's such like a tricky topic. Like I think that when you do fuck up, like you need to show remorse and that you're sorry and own what you did. Yeah. Um, But I think that like the only way to truthfully do that is over time through action. That's it. Like I think that you need to show an apology rather than say an apology. Actions speak louder than words. Every time. Every single time. So I think like it's it's just a tricky road to go down because there's never anything that you can truly say to fix it. I think it, it, you have to prove that you're sorry and realize what you did was wrong over time. And I, I'm glad I like that I've been that. able to do that over the last couple of years. Yeah. So I, for real, last question, because it has more to do with me. Uh, <laughs> God, is <God>. basic. <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't realize how crazy that sounded until after it came out of my mouth, but I kind of love it, is the idea of anchoring bias. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't. So basically, anchoring bias, there's a million forms of biases, right? Mm -hmm. Confirmation bias. And I learned about this one, anchoring bias, which basically means people tend to hold on to and believe the first piece of information they hear about something. And it's really hard for them to let it go. Yeah. And I think for me, that was very difficult, I'm sure, for you. Not that we didn't fuck up. I'm just saying. Moving forward... Do you feel like this is something that will always be a part of your story and you and? Unfortunately, yeah, I do. And that sucks. But at the end of the day, it's my fault. So it is what it is. Like mm-hmm. I said, I've, I've moved past it. I think that, you know, whenever drama videos first started being made about me in 2019, my dating life became extremely public. And it just, once again, unfortunately, became a trend to post conversations that people have with me, whether they were on DMs, dating apps in real life, and it started getting a lot of engagement. So that's always going to be something that I will now need to look out for Mm -hmm. when having any sort of conversation, romantic or not. So I think like with that, it's just the same thing as like, if you were a restaurant owner and you said, oh, Gordon Ramsay came in and said my food was and spit on it, you would probably believe it because, you know, that's the character that he is online. If Mm -hmm. you said that, you know, you were in the, (laughs) <laughs> a store and overheard Billie Eilish singing to herself and she sounded incredible, you would believe it because she's an incredible singer. Yes. Unfortunately with me, my dating life became public and stories were posted and, you know, it becomes a thing where now if anybody makes anything with any sort of claim, 
like you said, it's the it's the anchoring bias where people say, oh, yes. I've heard this before, so it it's must true. be true. It's the first thing I heard, and there's nothing different. Yeah. I just think everyone listening, all my sleuths, like it's something to be aware of. I mean, regardless of any sort of like scandal, whether it's, you know, politics, celebrity news, a new divorce, a new baby, mama drama, whatever it is. And like information is so easily accessible, but also just as easily misconstrued. And mm-hmm. everything goes viral every couple of seconds on all different platforms with whatever information is going to be most entertaining to the viewers. Totally. And I just think it's a vital skill to be able to look for, you know, a, a real source or accurate information, regardless yeah. of whatever topic is being discussed. Or read something from a actual unbiased point of view and not like a, oh my God, this is like giving me a little bit of a thrill to read. Yeah. Should we move on? I would love to move on. <laughs> I'm glad we talk. I, like I said, I'm an open book. I have no problem talking about anything, but it's been years and I've talked about this so many times. Honestly, I don't think anybody gives a f- anymore. Not that they don't. Oh my God, that's bad wording too. Wait, Nobody, why? Well, I mean, not, not that they don't care about what happened. I think that people don't want to hear me talk about it. No, the thing is, I think they do. Like they, people do anything that was big like that and made a splash. They do want to keep hearing it. I think it'll get views, but I think that at the end of the day, I will always take accountability for what I did do, but I refuse to, you know, admit to what I didn't. So I just hope that through time, once again, I'm able to continue showing the person that I am and just moving forward and growing. Yes. So let's talk about makeup painted by James Charles. Yes. I saw the palette stunning. Thank you. I want you to use it on me. I I was telling James I was going to accidentally, and I'm doing quotation marks, (laughs) show up to the house without any makeup on and be like, oh my God, like so much is going on. There was an earthquake. That's not a lie. There actually was was an earthquake today. And it really scared me. Um, (laughs) And and be like, I am running late. Like, could you just help me really fast? Mm -hmm. Just so you would have to do my makeup. Yeah. Which that's been it's happened a lot of times before. People actually do that. Yeah. You're lying. No, people. I mean, yeah, I get asked quite frequently to do. But like, will they pretend? Like, oh my god. I've had some events like that. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) I've had like girlies that'll come over and be like, oh my god, I have this dinner to go to, but like, oh, I just look so ugly, and I'm like, you're like sorry. Damn. You're like, maybe put a little makeup on. <laughs> They're like, oh, could you just do it? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. so stupid. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. It's okay though. I love helping my girls out. Do I you? Do. I do. Okay. I do. Okay. Makeup is like, it's so, like, I'm, it, it is my job. So, of course, a prodigy. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> thank you. Oh my God. Of course. I would disagree, but <laughs> thank mm. you. Appreciate it nonetheless. No. I just think, like, when it becomes your job, everything is never as, you know, fun as, it, it once says, but at the end of the day, the reason why I fell in love with makeup in the first place is making people feel beautiful and confident. Mm-hmm. And if I can do that with, you know, 15 minutes in the glam chair, it's a sacrifice worth making every single time. 15 minutes. Well, I mean, I know you, <laughs> I know, you, I know you can take as long as you want, <laughs> but what would you say is like your everyday get ready with me? routine time. My everyday get ready with me time is nothing. Like this is what I look like on a daily basis. Well, you look stunning and you don't have makeup Thanks. on and I wish you would have told me so then I would have done my makeup <laughs> like I wasn't wearing any and we could both be like, oh my God, we're not wearing like bare face interview. If but- I'm doing like a really, really, really simple glam, it'll take me like 15 minutes because I'll do um, like brows, a little bit of brow gel just to make them look nice, a little freckle. I'll curl my lashes, add a little bit of um, mascara and like maybe a lip balm. If you could only choose one makeup product. Oh, such a boring question. Is it? Do you every, always get that? Yeah, it's a, that's the typical I'm new shit. to makeup. <laughs> it's okay. That's why I'm it's asking. Every interview ever is like, if you could bring one product to a deserted okay, well, island. Okay, that. Girl, if I'm bring, going to a deserted island, I'm bringing a flare. I'm bringing a, a raft. I'm bringing a, an <laughs> oar. Something like a flint and steel. Another person. I'm not bringing you a fucking eyebrow pencil. Another Let's get real. Another person to okay? talk to. No. F- fucking crazy. Okay, f- okay f- that question. <laughs> Painted by James Charles. Yeah. Tell me about it. I didn't it. mean to be rude. I, no. But- <laughs> no. I'm asking because I'm being selfish right now. And I love this, Survivor. It's like one of my favorite TV shows is- ever. So like, I couldn't give a less of f- about, I love makeup, but like once, yeah. if I'm going to a deserted island, I'm taking that shit serious. I'm getting off. Mm-hmm. I'm not being stranded. And you're getting a raft? Maybe. Okay. 
I would just I need get to survey per- the island first to decide what I need. I, w- I would, would be get first. a person. What just because the, f- the person gonna just do just for my mental health. Because I wouldn't want to be alone with the raft and like hope. Girl, what do you think the raft is to do? It's I, to leave. I know it's to get out there, but I just feel like a person would help keep me sane. No, I'm fine. I need my escape route planned. Okay, well, I hope go. the raft can get you 700 miles across the ocean. So back to Painted <laughs> by James Charles. This is my fourth time coming back. Sorry. What was the inspo? I have been obviously doing makeup for a really long time now, mm-hmm. and I've had so many offers to you know, start an incubator brand, have all these investors do all sorts of different things. But I really didn't know what I wanted to do to make my mark on the industry. And when I created my palette with Morphe years ago, that unlocked like a new area of my brain where it was the coolest thing to make that palette and bring it to life with the creative and the marketing and just designing everything involved. Mm -hmm. Then seeing people get it and create just art on their face. That was the Art. coolest f- thing to me. And I've been drawing and painting ever since I was literally like two years old. My mom has like all the artworks displayed at the home. So I have like cute. all those crazy things on my Instagram from years ago as a kid. So I've always had so much love for art. And weirdly, like before I got into makeup too, I used to do portraits of like um, celebrity women. I've always just loved women's faces. And mm-hmm. that's how I got into makeup in the first place was doing other people's glam. So I think I've just always loved like symmetry and beauty and just like art. So that was the inspiration behind the brand was I wanted to create products where people could create artistic makeup looks for an everyday affordable price. Okay. Great answer. You had that like boom, boom, boom. (laughs) Let's talk about the marketing. Yeah. The campaign and that TikTok video, well, multiple of them. Who, like, is the artistic director? But Like, they're incredible. Thank you. So I work with, literally, I have my team right here at the house. It's myself in every single meeting. And I have a couple of people that work with me on my creative. And we do everything ourselves. So we don't have an agency. We don't have an outside source with everything. It's wow. just basically, like, In-house. coming up with our shit. I think there are so many makeup brands on the market these days. And it's so hard to stand out. So with Painted, you know, obviously, we're working on making sure our formulas are incredible and, you know, are at a great price point. But at the end of the day, every brand has a blush. Every brand has an eyeshadow palette. Every brand has an eyebrow product. So of course, we're working on innovations for the brand and would love to create products that truly have never before been seen. Mm -hmm. But in these beginning stages where we're just working on creating the staples for the collection for people to add to their everyday routine, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. So for us, it's about great formulas. But how can we get people excited about a new palette? How can we get people excited about a new sponge or a new product that they probably have already used 100 variations of? But how can we prove and market that ours is the best? So that's been a really fun challenge for me is like, how can we fuck with people a little bit? How can we get people (laughs) excited? How can we get people talking? So that's been my favorite part of creating the brand. That's a really good creative process. Like, yeah. I, but I'm going to try that shit. I don't know what I'm selling, but I'm going to do it. You're going to sell your stock in this new company that we're no, starting. No, I'm actually sell- selling the whole idea, but, um, <laughs> so. We have several witnesses. <laughs> That's very so true. And I have my own. Well. And I have my own too. And you have your own too. Um, what would you say from your collection stands out or makes it different? I mean, I think our Create paints are super fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so proud of the Basic Canvas palette, but it is a neutral palette. We were super upfront and transparent by saying... This is not groundbreaking. It's not revolutionary. That was the whole point of the entire campaign. Yes. But I think the Create Paints, the first product that we launched, truly were something really fucking cool that a lot of people don't already have in their makeup collection. They were not the first paints on the market. So let me make that clear. I'm not taking credit for that. There mm-hmm. were several other amazing brands that had paints before me. But um, I think that it, it comes across like a product that might be really hard for an everyday consumer to integrate into their makeup routine. Oh. But that's what a lot of our videos and marketing and educational content was about, showing how it can be used by anybody. Okay. Um, we have 10 colors as of right now. And, you know, we have red, orange, yellow, green, purple, pink, but we also have brown, white, and black. So the black is the perfect paint for your eyeliner. The brown can be used for freckles, lip liner, an eyeliner, and your waterline for all sorts of gorgeous looks. Even contour people were using it for. 
Um, same thing with like the pink for blush. So you can really use them in all sorts of different ways that people might not really figure. It's been really cool just to see how people have integrated into their makeup routines, even in ways that I would have never expected. Yeah. So that's really cool because it's like a multi-use product and everyone, you know, when we were taking meetings with these billion dollar companies that wanted to invest into the brand or wanted to, you know, run the brand in the first place, everyone said, you did this Morphe palette, release the palette first. You need to do the palette. You need to put something out that everyone's going to want to buy. But I was like, if I'm making this brand that's all about art and getting people to fucking be creative, can you imagine if I had this brand called Painted and it's all about art and then the first launch is a neutral palette? <laughs> Be, let's be for fucking real. Yeah. It would have gotten, it would have yeah. dissolved in four seconds flat. So I wanted to, I was really set in stone about, I, I want to release the product first that will set the standard for what this brand stands for. And I was so blessed and grateful and pleasantly surprised by the sales even of Create Paint. And of course the palette did exactly what we thought it was going to do, but it's been really cool to see that people are still interested in creative makeup looks and color and just you know, trying cool shit. Yeah. It's make, it washes off at the end of the day. So I think it's so cool to just try new stuff. You're, you are brilliant with makeup. Obviously you are a genius with marketing. Thank you. I'm going to have you help me on my next campaign for whatever you. I do. Ready to go. Really? I love, marketing is so fun to me. I think it's so cool. It's not. Mm -mm. <laughs> What? For me, for me, not for do, you. No, I know. Why do you say that? I don't know. It just, it doesn't come naturally to yeah. me. <gasps> oh my God. What were you going to say? No, I want to hear what you're going to say. I just recently, did you, everybody in this room listen to this. Did you know, this is going to blow your fucking mind. I'm scared. Did you know that if you get a call from a blocked number on star 67, okay, if you go to your call log of all the phones and you click on the number, even though it says, blocked number or block or no caller ID, mm -hmm. you can press your little fucking finger on that no caller ID and click copy. And if you scroll over to the keypad where you go to dial a phone number and you double tap and click no paste, way. it will give you the phone number. It's that easy. Did you know that? I just no, recently. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I swear to fucking God. No, no, no. I swear to God. Yep. Can someone call yep, me? Yep, okay, yep. I guess we can try this out later, yep. but like I, I just somebody just did it to me a couple of days ago and it was a fucking man that I had blocked. But that's like that's crazy. It is groundbreaking. Yeah. Maybe I should have you call me. I just we don't have phone Oh. I wonder if I do. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe like not that right. It's okay. Honestly. Oh. <laughs> I pay for fiber internet, but I could not get AT&T to install a tower in my backyard. Sorry to disappoint. Yeah. Sam always makes fun of me for how cheap I like to be, actually, to be honest. Uh -huh. I don't like to spend my money on... I, I like to pick... I pick and choose how I like to spend my money. I'm very... I wouldn't say that I'm frugal, but th th I value certain things more than others. Same. I think I'm very similar. Like, I, I feel like every rich person has like a collection of cars. I have one. Mm -hmm. You know, I spent all of my money on my house. Yes. I love my house. I'm a, I'm a homebody. And I love being it. here. I, I did. It was an I investment. I love entertaining. It was a vested property, obviously. But like, I only have one car. I don't, I have one Birkin and I regret the purchase. I do not have a full crazy collection. <laughs> I have a Birkin and Period. a Kelly. Okay, you better, you're doing better than me. I didn't pay for them though, but... <gasps> You're really doing oh, wait, better I than me. I did pay for the Kelly. So wait, hot. I did pay for the Kelly, actually. Like, even not paying for... Bitch, somebody bought you a Birkin? Yeah. That's so hot. I know, right? I love that for you. I know. Okay. You better work, Diva. And it was a good one. Okay. I bought my own and I paid way too much money for it. Um, The Kelly, like, I regret. Well, did you do, like, whoever Directly bought... Directly from yes, Hermes? Yes, did you do it through Hermes? No, me neither. It's so impossible. I don't care to play the game. I, I just, kind of do care really? play, but it's too much. Like I don't have time. <laughs> no, I swear to God, I don't have time. I just think like. You have to like go to Hermes. I just want to go and buy a fucking headscarf or like a Twilly. Yeah. What the fuck am I going to tie it on unless it's a Birkin? Right. Do you think I need a 50 Twilly collection for when I get one handbag to tie all of them on? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> And I don't care. I don't care. But you can dress it up in different ways and maybe like... No. To be... I 
thing too, whenever the bitches that have Birkins keep their shit in their fucking room or a temperature controlled closet with the fucking stuffing, it's that's, that's, that's embarrassing. Yes. Well, to be fair, they do hold value. So it's an investment. It's just like a house. It's an investment property. So I get it. That's fine. If you're like, you're collecting to one day sell that I can respect. But if you're actively wearing them, I think it's so much cooler to me and actually says you have real money when your bath looks like shit. I when agree. When it's falling apart, when it has scratches and scuffs, that means you don't care about the value of it and you're actually using it. A hundred percent. That's why my Kelly has a huge scratch on it that I accidentally did to it and I was crying <laughs> about it, but now I'm going to play oh it God. off. like The first day I got my bark in, my best friend farted in it. And ever since then, <laughs> it's drooped. <laughs> he opened the bag and just farted inside. And ever since then, it's never been the same. <laughs> I'm that's the funniest thing I've ever fucking heard. Yeah. But also deteriorated the leather. <laughs> please. Um, I also think if your Birkin or designer handbag is in a crazy color, that screams rich. Like if yeah, you yeah, if yeah. you have it in black, it's like, okay, you're using that as your everyday bag. Like, oh, she's calling me poor. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That the Paris Hilton t-shirts stop being poor. I mean, there's no That's Wi-Fi. Right now. There's Wi-Fi <laughs> and it's fiber internet. Let's relax, okay? I can't control the phone service. If you want to call AT&T <laughs> and get a tower installed, be my fucking guest, okay? Is this okay? our first fight? Are Maybe. we fighting? You, you don't like it when I say rich. You don't like it when I say poor. I recognize the privilege that I have and privilege. I recognize that I'm in privilege. a far better Period. monetary situation than a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I'm certainly not sitting here flying on private jets every day and going to expensive dinners and with a thousand car garage. It's not my vibe. I don't care to be. Really? Like no. that's not important to you? No. For me, like I love spending my money on experiences, memories that I will always cherish, trips, vacations, fun activities. I'm a whore for an excursion. I love an escape room. What's an excursion? Oh, escape room? Like when room? you're on like vacation, like I have no desire Zip to- lining? Yes. Yes. When you're on vacation, I have no desire to either sit in the hotel or like lay on the fucking beach. Are you one of the type of people on vacation where you're like oh, sleeping at 2 p.m. because you're like, oh, it's my time off? I wouldn't sleep in. If no, we're, no, if no. If we're vacationing, no. we're vacationing. No. If I'm vacationing, I want to see the culture of the place that I'm in. I want to go. Okay, I want to do fair. fun shit. I want to make memories. I don't want to lay on a fucking beach. I can do that anywhere. I can do that in Santa Monica. Okay. True. That's true. But I live in New York. So where the fuck am I going to lay? By the East well, I River? Vacation, baby. Okay, New York but, is on okay, vacation. Okay, but you can do that here. I just, <laughs> I, I do not like when people go on vacation yeah. and want to do activities from morning till night. And I feel like that's you, that's but me. I love you. That, no, that's fine. Regardless. That's fine. That's such a great boundary that we've now set. So yeah. now we know is with this new founding friendship, we yeah. shouldn't vacation together. And that's oh. fine. And I don't mean that in a shady way. Some people shouldn't travel together. I was about to say, oh my God, yeah, we could balance each other out. And then you were just like, we should not go no, on I, vacation together. I think that every friendship has different boundaries and standards and, and levels that they can reach. I think some friends, you know, some friends you could go on a trip with for a month and never get bored. Some yes. friends you can only like be us. with for a couple of hours. And by the end of it, you're like, oh my God, I love you so much. But like, I just need a breather. And that's fine. Yeah. That's what life's all about is balance. And that's us. That's us. That's us. Yeah, yin, a few yin, yin, hours, yin, baby. and then it's like, I'll see you next time. Yeah, and, well, you I didn't know, say that, but I just said maybe not, <laughs> maybe not a vacation. Um, <laughs> I like to get up and go. You know, I don't want to sit around. I was in Australia a couple of months ago. We did snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef. Okay, what did I will you never forget that? What did you see? And then I swear to God, we're gonna get back to just on topic fish and coral. Okay, well, <laughs> but like, I, that's so cool. You know, we we helicoptered into the Great Barrier Reef to go snorkeling. Okay, I'm going to have to one-up you. I went snorkeling in Hawaii, and I saw an eel and an octopus get in a fight with each other. <gasps> and Bitch, the that is a one-up. I will give you that. The, That's crazy. Like, you took a helicopter. Like, I saw some real no, shit. The, I the respect that. The octopus released ink. Really? Yes. And the octopus well, octopus won. don't ink. Squid do. Wait, what? No, octopus do, too. I don't think that they do. We have marine biologists up here with an F over here. <laughs> marine biologist. <laughs> okay. Music. Yes. Call me back. 
My cousin and I were listening to it over and over today. Oh, my God. It's really, really fucking good. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Very good. That means so much. Yes. I also, just for the sleuths and everyone listening, like heard James singing just a little bit around the house. Your voice is incredible. (laughs) Thanks. Incredible. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've been singing for a thousand years, ever since I was literally like, a little baby I've been singing my entire life far before I ever discovered makeup and unfortunately for me it's all been documented online mm-hmm. since I was a kid I, there's so many awful videos of me singing? singing all these viral memes and stuff and it's fine I love laughing at them but I've always really really wanted to work on my own original music but I was Terrified? honestly traumatized from a lot of the oh. the hate and the, the videos that were made and just so scared of wanting to get it perfect but yes. I finally found the right team to help make it happen I we talked all about all the shit that I went through earlier that was the entire inspiration for the project so once again okay. I kind of talked about like it was a shitty situation but I feel like it was a, a great learning lesson and now a, a blessing in disguise to of course, make me more careful on the dating end, but also give me this this new venture and this new chapter of my life that I'm so fucking excited for. Yeah. Was it really emotional? Yes. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell by how you're talking right yeah, now. I, I thank fucking God we had like a little bit of a technical difficulty last night before I started singing the song to everybody. Um why? Because you were crying? No, no. I was, what I've done, when I, we had all the rehearsals, I sobbed every single time leading up to singing it. Yeah. Um, but last night we had a technical difficulty where the track like just wasn't playing um, and uh, the piano wasn't like working through the speakers. So I had to just sit there for like a couple of minutes and just like, tell, like, tell weird jokes to get it, to <laughs> get the crowd not uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And that honestly made me feel so much better about it so I didn't cry I didn't well I did but not until after I, <laughs> I sobbed actually when I walked inside no I could feel it right now but that's what makes incredible music you yeah. know like I said I've loved music forever but I didn't really know what I wanted to talk about and all this shit happening to me once again once I switched my mindset and realized like you're not the victim mm-hmm. so like reframe your thinking yeah and this entire project is basically every single song is about different aspects of love and the growth and the learning experiences that I've had with just relearning how to love and how to how I want to be loved. Mm. So Call Me Back is all about getting ghosted, which is so prevalent in today's culture and society. And it fucking drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. Cause like we talked about earlier with no people, I would so much rather have somebody just be like, Hey, thank you for the conversation, but I I just don't think there's a spark here. I wish you the absolute best. It's so easy to fucking say that. And of course that might hurt, but that to me is, I would so much rather be hurt by that than be left wondering without closure why this person left. But I had to stop and realize at the end of the day, silence is worth thousands of words. Yeah. Like I say in in the second verse of the song, that's one of my favorite, most important lyrics of the entire thing. It's so important to be able to find closure in getting ghosted or you will drive yourself crazy. I agree with that. I feel like I'm the type of person who would ghost. Really? And maybe I need to work on that. Yeah. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody feels comfortable with you know, interacting in certain ways. I, you would be the type to say, I'm just not into it. And if somebody's doing something whack as fuck, that, bye baby, I'm fucking Casper up in here, okay? I'm gone. <laughs> you better call fucking Ghostbusters because yeah, yeah. I know where to be found, okay? But if I'm having a, a good conversation with somebody or if I've been talking to somebody that I respect and it's not wrong to me in any sort of way, yeah. but maybe I'm not feeling it. Maybe they made me, you know, a little bit uncomfortable or I'm, or it's something it just isn't fitting the vibe. Mm -hmm. I think it it takes 30 seconds to write a kind message being like, thank you so much. I just don't think that this is the right fit. I wish you the best. That solves so much problems. It doesn't leave anybody wondering. And of course it might hurt for a moment, but I personally, just as much as I do always say that, I would much rather hear that as well than get ghosted. I would rather be ghosted than someone text me and be like... Well, I also feel like you have, I mean, from you know, doing my research on you. I feel like mm-hmm. you have some pretty high standards when it comes to dating. dating. Miss check the bank account, miss, Birkin. you know, Birkin bag. Oh, check the bank <laughs> account. That one will follow me forever. <laughs> I, I mean, I 
everybody has different boundaries. Now I need to now check IDs before I talk to any person. Exactly. So, and that's fine. Yeah. That's Bank fine. account IDs and social security. I hate dudes that are on social media. Really? And yes. When you get in a serious relationship, will you be public with that person? Yes, but after a really long time. I think that I've been a clout token far too many times for mm. men that I didn't give a fuck about. So I would really want to make sure that the person that I'm with, I was positive that they were in it for the right reasons and not trying to use me for anything other than genuinely loving the human being that I am before posting it. But my entire life has always been online. I love making content online. And of course I want to make cute shit, bitch. Yeah. I want the fucking likes on a relationship video. You want to show them off once yeah, I would you're love certain. To, as long as I'm positive that it's the right vibe. I will not. Okay. Will not. I love that. Good for you. And sometimes I think maybe that's like unhealthy as fuck. I don't know. I th everybody has different boundaries. Everybody has different things that they want to do. If I think that also like when you're in the public eye, it's just risky. It's really dangerous. It's and that's why I want risky. to wait. But eventually, you it's, know. It's going to come out. Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't love like, I'm not a big going out person. I'm not like out on the town that often. But, you know, I go to red carpets and events very frequently that I'm grateful to be invited to. I love going out to eat with friends oh my and, God, and people all the time. Oh my God, and you take a you like to drop the carpet. You drop the hand when you get to the carpet, though. No, I, I'm not dating anybody, so I have nobody to bring with me to but a like, date. Like, what if you just brought like a casual date? Oh my god! For like a first time, <laughs> bitch. What? No, no, no. Listen. Have you ever please. done that? No, this is something that this publicist from forever ago told me was like, just take someone just to get people talking. <gasps> No. Kind of smart. I would, I, no, 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 no. I would never do that. Never, ever, ever. Because people are going to find out who that is. And that's just, that's just as much. Even if you're not posting them on your platforms, yeah. that's just as much of a clout token for the other person. If press picks it up, if TikToks are made, if people on Twitter find it, it's the same shit. That's true. But it gets people talking about me. It's not, it's... After it's all that not. I've been through and the mistakes that I've made, the last thing that I want is people discussing my dating life <laughs> any further. So, no. I, there was one guy that I was talking to for like six months that I brought with me to a Halloween party. And it was great. It was fine. He didn't and do... And what? It was everywhere? No, like, ended no up it, it actually went nowhere. It was perfectly fine. It was great. Uh, but the, my point is that I talked to him for half a year before I was willing to bring him anywhere public with me. Okay. He didn't do anything weird. He was perfectly fine and normal. It was a great yeah. vibe. It didn't go anywhere either. So, it was it was fine. And the Halloween party you had him with a mask. No. Nope. <laughs> like a full just, jumpsuit so no one knew who it was. I think a, a lot of the guys that I used to spend my time talking to, too, were guys that would treat me like a science experiment or like a secret. And that's also a trap that I fell into mm. quite a lot. And one of the topics that gets brought up a lot in some of the music that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the things, too, where I've even a, a lot of the guys that I used to spend my time talking to, I couldn't have even brought to things even if I wanted to because it was guys that would want to talk to me in private or hook up in private or hang out in private, mm. but would never be willing to be out in public. And now yeah. I've learned that I deserve somebody that's going to be proud to love me and be with me whenever that person comes. Mm -hmm. So that was an important lesson learned too. You're making me self-reflect. Your entire <laughs> album just seems like there are so many lessons and you've lived a lot of lives. Yeah. So I've been here for, I know everyone thinks that I'm like 100 years old. I'm literally 24. I've just been doing this since I was 16. So it's been eight years in the public eye. So yeah. I've lived eight lifetimes. Yeah, 20, 20 lifetimes, yeah. a lot. Um, what are your other plans when it comes to music? We, need, have, like, we need more. I have no idea. I have. We need you on tour. No, we don't. We do. We do not need me on tour, baby. No, we do. <laughs> I, look, I am so fucking grateful that the response of the song has already been really positive. It's good. But I am just taking it one day at a time. I am not working on this to be a pop star. I don't want to tour. I don't think that I'm some fucking musical icon and genius. I worked on this project as a healing process for myself. I worked on it as a form of therapy and that's all that this is to me. I don't care about the number of streams. I don't care about the money. I am putting in a lot of work and effort into the marketing and the visuals because I genuinely find a lot of interest in that. Yeah. And I'm not doing that to blow up the song. I just want to be able to tell my story of the things that I've gone through and hopefully be able to help anybody that might be going through the same thing. 
I think that was one of the most interesting things for me is all these situations are so deeply personal that I felt so alone in dealing with because a lot mm. of them were very unique. But I was shocked to see how many friends and people have been able to relate to the situations if you look at them from a bird's eye view. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm just taking it one step at a time. I do have several other songs written and recorded that are ready to go if the time feels right and I decide to put it out. But I, I truly do not have any plans. Okay. And there will not be a James Charles tour. I guess I should never say never, but as of I, right now. I think there should. I am self-aware enough to know that I've become a meme far too many times for poor singing. And even though I am so what, proud the, of what, my... What, 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 that's only yeah, one I know. Oh, there's hundreds. I can educate you later on. Okay. But I'm smart enough and self-aware enough to know that my vocals have greatly improved as I've trained them over the last several years. But I'm not fucking Mariah Carey. I'm not Ariana. I'm not Beyonce. Okay. If I went on stage for a tour and even had one note go wrong live, which is of course going to happen mm -hmm. because I'm not perfect. Neither is anybody. Right. But that would, that would unfortunately, I think really, that would become the entire topic of conversation with the entire project. So I'm not, I'm but not willing to let that happen. But also who cares? Have you seen I the do. memes on Mariah I'm Carey? I'm traumatized from getting made fun of for something that I love doing. Okay. Yes, that's true. I but was like why are you lip singing? Sinking? Girl, because that's lame to me. Oh, I feel like that's what I would do. If I'm performing mm -hmm. live. No, that was suggested to me as an option for, you know, the performance so we did last badass. night with the fans. But I was like, no, absolutely fucking not. Well, I worked my ass off for years with vocal coaches and with training and with, you know, once again, my own personal health journey to get to where I am to even be able to talk about these subjects in the first place. If I'm going to... If I'm going to, I said to myself, if I'm ever going to release a song, I better be able to sound exactly the fucking same if I sing that live. Damn. Or else then it's not, a, it's no You're, point. You, you are know? a true artiste and I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. <laughs> I heard the song, the lyrics, the way, like your emotional response to us talking about it. Like that's a true It just means artist. a lot. I've, I've wanted to do this for so long and now that it's out and it's getting a a pretty good response is like more than I could ever ask for. I'm just happy to tell my story. Wow. James, thank you so, so, so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I feel like we had great conversation. Yeah. A little wacky, but really deep. <laughs> yeah. And we've learned a lot about each other. We have. We're, we won't be taking a vacation opposites. anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. We're polar opposites. But if I'm you were on a vacation, where would you go? Where would you bring me? <sighs> Off the top of my head, mm -hmm. I mean you, Costa Rica, to do all okay. of the adventures okay. that they have I'm, there. That's a great choice. Where would you take me? Um, <laughs> He's like... No, I'm thinking, shut up. Maybe like <laughs> Paris. Oh my God. Got got a choice? That's what I was thinking in my brain. Okay, so we know Bonjour. each other. Bonjour. This is hot. Wee wee. Wee wee. Okay, we're going to post the link to your song and everything else. Thank and you. James, I love you. Thank you so much. And salutes. I will talk to you next week. James, do you want to say anything? Listen to the song. Yeah, thank you for having me. My first ever song, Call Me Back, is officially out now on all streaming platforms. You can go and find it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Um, you can shop Painted, my makeup brand, at painted.co on all socials, at painted.co. And of course, I am James Charles everywhere. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being kind with the conversation. I really appreciate everything. Mm -hmm. And... I have to pee so fucking badly, so <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> and my thong is up my butt, and, like, I need to pull it out. I'm, Bye. like, about to wet myself. I need to go. Hold on. <laughs>